evening, everybody. My name is Charlene Margo, and I'm the founder of the Parent Education Series, now in its 15th season, and co-founder of the nonprofit, The Parent Venture. We could not be more delighted to have you with us tonight and our special keynote speaker, Ashanti Branch, who we have been dreaming about having to this program for years. So really, it is a great honor and treat to have you with us tonight, Ashanti. Um, before we get started, I want to say if you would like Spanish interpretation, tonight we have with us interpreter Cynthia Hinesterosa, who's going to give you some quick directions in Spanish. Muchas gracias, Cynthia. All right, so again, tonight is a very important topic. The title of our program is Ever Forward, Siempre Adelante, Building Character by Transforming Lives, which actually comes from a nonprofit that Ashanti founded. We know that this is an important and timely topic for you parents with more than 250 registered. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Ashanti um, in a couple of minutes, but first I just wanna let you know that he is an internationally renowned youth development mentor and thought leader who's been featured in the documentary film, The Mask You Live In, and a recent episode of Lisa Ling's, uh, Lisa Ling, this is Life with Lisa Ling called Lost Boys. If you have not seen either that film or that episode, we recommend them highly. We'd like to say a special thank you tonight to the San Mateo County Office of Education. Special thanks to Superintendent Nancy McGee and Mary McGrath, the Executive Director of Safe and Supportive Schools for San Mateo County Office of Ed. It is through their sponsorship that we are able to bring you this special program tonight. So just briefly, the format that we're going to follow is we'll have about 45 minutes of content with Ashanti. He has some surprises for us, including an activity. And then we're going to leave about 15 minutes for questions from you, the audience. So tonight in the chat button, my partner Bev Hartman will be putting links and items of interest. Feel free to use the chat to talk to each other, to talk to us, to make comments. And when you have questions, please put them in the Q&A button. So questions in the Q&A, comments in the chat, all right? Um, tonight's video will be recorded. If any of you have spouses or partners or students who would like to view it, it will be available free on our video library. And just a note, our next event comes up next week on Wednesday, March 24th, 12 p.m. with Dr. Anna Lemke from Stanford School of Medicine. She is presenting the Neuroscience of Addiction, which is gonna be a great event. She was recently featured in the documentary many of you saw called The Social Dilemma. All right, here we go. A little bit more about tonight's keynote presenter. Ashanti Branch was raised by a single mother on welfare in Oakland. And he went on to study engineering at California Polytechnic, San Luis Obispo. A civil engineer in his first career, Ashanti found his passion for teaching while tutoring struggling students. In 2004, as a first year teacher, he founded the Ever Forward Club to provide a support group for African-American and Latino males who are not achieving up to the level of their potential. The Ever Forward Club has helped 100% of its members graduate high school. Branch is on a mission to change the way that students interact with their education and the way that schools interact with students which is why we are here tonight. After being featured in the Mask You Live In documentary and fellowships at the Stanford D School, Campaign for Black Male Achievement and the Gratitude Network, Ashanti launched the Million Mask Movement to connect people all over the world in a self-reflective experience that helps people visualize and realize I am not alone. Please join me in a really warm virtual welcome for our friend Ashanti. Take it away. Thank you, thank you for having me. And good afternoon um, to all of you. I'm really excited to be in the space with you. Um, a couple of things that I'm really excited about in this moment. Um, um, one, and maybe you just at the end of today just felt like you need to take a deep breath. So maybe let's just all do that together. Let me just take a deep breath. Breathe in, just hold a breath for a couple of seconds and then just breathe out. Like one of my, my mentors tells me that the incoming breath helps to energize the body and the outgoing breath helps to relax your body. And so maybe you take a really quick deep breath in and you just take a slow breath out. 
you know, parents in the room, and maybe some of you are parents and teachers and mentors and coaches, and you do so many things. I really am uh, asking tonight that you give yourself some attention as much as you can. I mean, you may have other things happening around you. And I know that right now we live in these kind of these rectangles sometimes. So there may be outside of this rectangle, many things happening. But if you can just uh, for this few minutes together, give yourself a few minutes just to breathe. And the way I want to start is I would like you in the chat, if you have access to the chat, if you can just write a number on a scale from one to 10, let's say if one is the worst and 10 is the best, like if when you take that breath, how are you feeling right now? Like if you if you could just in that space, just say, how am I feeling right now? What, 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 am, what am I what am I noticing? If I could give it my emotional being, my my health, my feelings being, how would I give a number on a scale from one to 10 and knowing that as we begin to see numbers populate the box, hopefully you put the number that just feels really right for you. Sometimes in, in workshops when I go, some people, the first number kind of sets the tone, right? So if the first number is high, then the number is kind of standard deviation move around that first number. But I'm just invite you to just really be the number that works for you. Because I'm gonna ask you all, I'm gonna ask you today is to do your best. And whatever your best is, wherever you, whether you came in the room at a five or came in at a nine, I believe that if you give your best, then you're going to leave here and you're going to get something out of it. That's only I can guarantee is that if you give your best, that something will land in the right place in your heart, your mind. And today is not really an intellectual experience. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to fill your head with a bunch of facts and numbers and figures. Today is more of a heart experience. Because as much as I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to actually ask you to do something. And what I'm going to be asking you to do is going to require that you find a space in your heart for room to maybe open up a little bit. You know, our, our workshop originally has a, has a really interesting name. You may not even like the name, but let me tell you what the name is. And we've been doing this workshop for about five years now. The workshop is called Taking Off the Mask. From the documentary, The Mask You Live In, our workshop was around masks. And we're not talking about uh, personal protection masks. Uh, here, here's my newest personal protection mask. That's my newest one. We're not talking about these masks. We're talking about the masks of emotional disconnection. The masks that sometimes help us or cause us not to be fully known. One of my mentors asked me um, the other day, um, hey, do you think it's possible to be fully loved if you are not fully known? It's a mouthful, right? Let me ask it again. Is it possible to be fully loved if you are not fully known? I thought it was a pretty deep question because he asked me, Ashanti, where are you fully known? And I was like, nowhere. You know, at work, they know these things. At home, they know these things. And in my, my friend group, they know these things who fully knows me? I don't, I don't know that I even know a place. You know, I'm on a men's team. I've been on a men's team for 10 years. Uh, and my men probably know more about me than most because I have a space that I know that it's safe, it's confidential, and I can go there and take off of the shield that I have to keep on most times. And tonight, even though we're going to be in this webinar space, I'm going to ask you as much as you can to just maybe take a layer off to get more real with the, 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 the circle of people that are gonna be in this space together. And so that's how we're gonna jump in. So thank you for checking in. And I see that we can see the numbers are all arranged. And so wherever you came to the space tonight from, I'm just gonna ask you just to maybe stand there, be there and give yourself a chance to just give your best from that number. And it's gonna be okay. Um, so here's what I wanna do first. Um, I wanna, um, I'm gonna show you some slides and I'm gonna basically take you through a, a journey through an experience. Um, and my first few minutes is really just to help bring some context to the work that we're about to do. So thank you for checking in. You know, um, when she read in the bio that, and the bios are always interesting, right? Because it, it's the highlight reel. And maybe um, you sometimes have heard highlight reels. And you're like, wow, it sounds so amazing. When I think about my life, I don't think about it in the highlight reel. Oftentimes, I'm more thinking about all the behind the scenes stuff that's usually not so pretty. And so uh, when I think about this picture, when I was raised, um, I was raised by a single mother. Um, my, after my sibling was born, my youngest brother uh, at the time, uh, my uncle told me, you're the man of the house. You got to take care of your mom and your sister and your brother. This is your responsibility. And I'm like, um, 
uncle, I'm just seven. Can you, uh, can you just like pick me up again and throw me in the air or something? Like, why, why are you making this all serious? And it wasn't like he was offering me an opportunity. He was telling me that this is your new role. Like you got to be the man of the house. At seven years old, I was supposed to know what it meant to take care of my family. And I was just trying to figure out how this boy thing goes. Um, and I think that was in that part of my life is where I realized that most of my existence from that point forward was always about performing. Because how I was respected as a good boy in my mom's house or a, a real man in the street was based on what I did. And if you didn't do the right things, then you weren't a real man in my community. I'm in Oakland, California. Like I knew that in my mom's house, it was be nice, be kind, be caring, be loving, be gentle, take care of your sister. Here's how you wash the clothes. Here's how you fold the dishes. Wash the clothes. You know what I mean? Like here's how you take care of the responsibilities of the house. Like I had to make sure my siblings were taken care of, but I had to, it was about doing. And when I didn't do what I was supposed to do, then I wasn't, honored for that. And when I thought about when I went out the streets to my mom's house out of the, and walk into school, walk into the park, kind, nice, caring, loving were not respected qualities. You got to be tough and strong and have all the answers. You better not ever back down. You better never cry. You better not show any feelings or emotions because men don't have emotions. And I don't know if that's the same language you heard growing up, but this is what I heard growing up. And because there was no man in my house, I had to listen to other men in the community who seemed like they got respect from people because, hey, no one bothers them. No one talks bad to them. And so I had these two worlds I was living in. My mom's the house of being a good boy and the world's world definition of being a good man. And sometimes there was a conflict because when I went to the park to play basketball by myself the first time, I was waiting for two hours. I'm like, well, what? something's going wrong here because the game keeps restarting. I've been standing here. Something, I'm, I'm waiting my turn. That's what my mom taught me. And one of the guys who seemed to be playing a whole lot, I just, you know, decided I was going to ask him, hey, excuse me, um, can you tell me how I've, I've been waiting here for like two hours? I thought I could play. He was like, ha, what are you talking about? You waiting for two hours? He said, you don't ask to play. He said, you walk out on the court while people are playing and you just yell out to everybody, I got next. I'm like, huh? What do you mean? Like, how, how does that work? Because <laughs> that rule wouldn't work with my mom to be declaring what's going to happen. You got to ask permission. You got to wait your turn. You got to stand in line. Like the outside of my mom's house, those rules didn't work. And so I'm telling you that just so you know that what I'm about to talk about today and what we're going to be doing is not something that I read in some books. It's something that is an experience that I've had growing up. And so we're going to move fast through that. So this is my mom. I love my mom. I'm, 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 I'm a self-proclaimed mama's boy. I, I didn't like her a lot when I was growing up. So if you got teenagers, when I was a teenager, I didn't like my mom a lot, but I, but I, but I love her. I'm thankful for her. This is my grandmother. My grandmother, it was my father's mother. My father died before I was born. So this is how I was able to like connect at least to some the, the branch name in my life, even though she never let me meet any of the other branches in my life. Um, and my grandmother last year, um, 2020, January, she passed away. Uh, I was the youngest grandson, so I was really close to her. But I didn't even get to think about it or grieve about it until January of this year. Have you ever held on to some grief? Have you ever held on to some pain, some sadness, some fear, some worry? Like, what do you do with it? In the midst of all the things that are going on in our lives, where do you get to deal with that stuff? Well, I got a job to be. I don't have time to be talking about that in my job. I got biz, I got work to do. I don't have time to think about it then. So I, I bottled it up. I bottled it up and I just stuffed it away. March came last year. The, my, my business, our work changed very dramatically. I'm like, what am I going to do? How am I going to? And January of this year is when I really began to deal with it. And so my grandmother, she, she lived a full life. But um, some of the sadness was also some of the joy that, man, I'm glad I didn't have to like wave at her through the screen door. I used to have dinner with my grandmother pretty much every Sunday after church I would go visit her I would have been hard to like go and not be able to go visit her because I was worried about making her get, get sick I, I had a lot of worries and this year of January I was able to deal with it. this picture is me in India um, you know when I graduated in engineering I wanted to be rich that was my plan because I knew that poor wasn't fun but I, they told me that you know if you go to college make a lot of money, you can live happily ever after. I was like, sign me up for that plan. And because I was good at math, that, that's where about my trajectory went. So when I graduated in engineering, 
came back to the Bay Area, making really good money. I realized something was missing. Like the money was there, but really I was just investing in happy hour. I thought it was happy ever after. I thought you would, once you get that final job and you make good money, the happiness was just all the time. But what it was, was happy Friday at 5 p.m. And then around 7 p.m. on Sunday, it starts fading out because you got to get back up and go back to the work, to the grind. And I thought I was missing something. Like, what, what, what's going on? And this is the picture of me in India in 2007 on a Fulbright Fellowship teaching math. That was not on my plan. If you looked at my journal from... Uh, a freshman out of college or first year out of college, I'm like, I'm about to take over the world. What? A, how did I end up in India teaching math? Definitely a profession that doesn't pay like the kind of lifestyle that I dreamed of living. But I was clear that my heart was full and thankful. And so I'm sharing this with you just so you can kind of see a, a little juxtaposition between the journey that I've been on, but also like this work that is really in integrated, the work that we do with young people. You know, as a teacher, as a mentor, as an educator, this work, this is a one of our rooms this past spring. Students were doing Zoom life. Like this is somehow some of the rooms look like people are there, but they're not, are they really there? Are they really paying attention? There's another one. Actually, everyone is there. I got everybody on the camera now, but two of them I can't even hear. Like they're talking, but you, they may as well not be talking because I have no idea what they're saying. The, 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 the you're like, thank you for answering that question. I so appreciate that. And I'm not going to lie and say it was a great answer because I don't know what you said, but I'm just glad you participated. Let's, let's get moving to the next person. We're going to keep moving because I don't know even what to tell you. Those were the journeys that we took. And even with the high school students we had this summer, like some of the high school students, whenever before in our lives have we been asked to go to meetings and look at ourselves all day? to stare at ourselves all day long. If this had happened while I was in middle school, I'm not showing up. That's just a Shanti Branch talking. I'm not telling anybody else that. I'm telling you, I had a very negative self image. I didn't wanna look at myself while I was brushing my teeth for two minutes a day. Def definitely I'm not gonna be staring at myself for hours a day. I'm not showing up. And so I know a lot when our young people are hiding half of their face, when they're not looking at the camera, I get it. I understand it because I remember what it felt like to not like what you looked like. That's just my personal story. And so when young people are hiding out from the camera, when they're only letting you see part of them, my job is to be caring and encouraging in the journey of that. This is our young people from our Social Emotional Leadership Academy. And so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have you try something because when I first became a teacher, I was not a good teacher. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and because I got only a short amount of time, I'm trying to, I want us to get into this activity really quick. But here's what I want you to do. Um, I want you to think about maybe when you were in high school, like think about, was it an easy experience? Was it a fun experience? Was it amazing? Was it a challenging? Wherever you were, high school, middle school, any one of those periods of time, I want you to just think about it. But I want you to try to think about it like this. Um, think about at that time in your life, an obstacle that you had overcome. An obstacle that you had overcome. And maybe think about an obstacle that you currently face. Because when I was first starting as a teacher, I was doing a really bad job. Not that I wasn't there every day prepared, that I didn't know the math. It was, I was not, I, would, I had students in my class who were smart, but were not doing well academically. And I was like, this can't be. I can't keep watching this. So I tried something new. I said, let me have them fill out this form. And I asked them, what are obstacles you overcome? And what are obstacles you currently face? And so as you maybe have thought about one thing that you were facing as a teenager or one thing that you currently face or maybe that you face as a teenager, I want you to think about these answers that some of these young people gave me in that question. The first one says, obstacles that I have overcome in my life is drugs and my girlfriend. Obstacles that I currently face are some teachers being boring like my English class. These are high school freshmen, okay? Obstacles that I've overcome in my life, I almost overcome gangs and stuff like that. Obstacles that, I over, obstacles that I currently face, they're gangs. And these are the last two I'm gonna read to you. Obstacles that I've overcome in my life is the fact that my dad is not with me no more and I had to accept it now. Obstacles that I currently face are school and how bad I wanna do good in school but I always end up slacking off. 
And this last one, I was just to be honest, I was kind of uh, irritated because it was so small. <laughs> like, why are you writing so small? I feel, can you fill up the whole, I, you don't fill up half the box? Like, come on, help me out here. And here's what it says. Obstacle that I overcome was just make it to the age I am. He's 13 years old, a freshman in high school. And he's just saying, look, I'm just glad to be alive. And the obstacle that he currently faced was passing the math class. I never would have thought that he cared about passing my math class. He should have late every day. But from that day forward, the fact that I knew that he was just glad to be alive, here's what happened when he came to class late. I'm like, man, I'm so glad you're here today. Give me a high five. And I gave him a high five. And then I'm like, now why are you late? <laughs> because late's still not okay. But let me just honor you for being present. Let me honor you for, if you're just glad to be alive, let me just at least be appreciative that you showed up to this place. That's how the relationships began to change and my teaching began to change and ever forward began to grow. So I began to try these letters that I was writing back and forth, but I was like, I can't keep up with that. I don't like English that much. And writing 150 letters a week is just not something that I'm, I mean, I thought, I started in a movie. Some teacher did that once, but um, I was like, I ain't gonna be in a movie, I guess. <laughs> but here's what I realized. That part of the work was me recognizing in the students that to help them figure out how amazing they were. So right now in your in your in your mind, if you can just think about it, just say I am to yourself. If you're in, if you're in a room by yourself and you can say it out loud, just say it. I am. And pick one of these words. And maybe as you start saying one of these words, it it may feel amazing. It may feel like totally perfect. Like I am awesome. What if it doesn't? You know, when my when my mentor first asked me to do this activity, I was like, man, I'm not doing this. It's silly. I ain't got time to be doing this. You should be helping me run this nonprofit. Why are you asking me to repeat silly things? <laughs> Why was I pushing back? He's like, Ashanti, why are you making this so hard? This is a simple task. And I'm like, because I don't have time for this. <laughs> That's what I, what I said. But what was happening inside of me is it where his next question hit me the hardest? He said, Ashanti, do you believe it? Do you believe that you're amazing? That you're awesome? That you're creative? And here's what I know about a lot of our young people. Some of them get poured into them every day, messages of positivity, of love, of care. I knew my mom loved me. She paid the bills. I knew my mom loved me. She took care of, we had a roof over our head. But it wasn't like every day I was hearing my mom say, Shanti, you're awesome. Shanti, you're amazing. I just knew it. And so for me, telling myself those things doesn't feel normal or accurate. Because most of my self-talk is not like these words. And only you know what kind of self-talk happens when no one's around. Only you know. I'm just being honest for myself is that I know that most of my self-talk is not these words. And I have to every morning practice being kinder to myself. I don't know what's real for you, but I'm, I'm just, but for your kids, for your students, for the people in your community, for your friends, the people who you actually love, do they know it because you tell them? Or they know it because you provide and because you do what you're asked to do or you're set up to do. I don't know what those things are, but here's what I know. I know that when I can begin to tell myself, Ashanti, you are awesome. And I can feel it and believe it. It actually feels kind of good, even though it's really difficult sometimes to do. Okay. Take a deep breath. I don't know where you're at right now in that feeling. I, I, I felt what I'm just saying right now because I'm, I'm, it means something to me. Because the young people that I work with that I get the opportunity to support are young people who I have constantly watched sometime not believe in themselves. Whenever Forward First started, I was not trying to start a nonprofit. I was trying to help young people find their voice. And here's what I know. Some of them didn't believe it. No matter how much I told them they were amazing and awesome. And I'm really good at telling other people how amazing and awesome they are. I'm not as good at telling myself that, but I'm clear about telling other people that. And I believe it. And I saw it. But if you don't hear it enough, maybe when somebody tells you, you don't even believe it. 
So this is the young man that first started the Ever Forward Club. This is 2004, San Lorenzo High School. I'm a first year teacher. If you told me when I took this picture that it looks like, Ashanti, you're starting a nonprofit, I would have told you, no, it's not possible because you can't get more nonprofit than teaching. I didn't even know what nonprofits were, but I knew that to start one of them doesn't sound like a good idea. <laughs> But now that I run a nonprofit, I know that it is possible to be more nonprofit than a teaching, but I didn't know at the time. Now, I want you to read this letter that I just exchanged with a young person right before Christmas. Christmas Day, there's a young man, he's 21 years old. Uh, he's been running from me, he's hiding. He's not, he hasn't been returning my text messages. He's not returning my calls. He's going through a life challenge. He's about to have a baby. Life is hitting him in a lot of different ways. He's just trying to figure it out. I wrote him, Merry Christmas. I hadn't talked to him in maybe four months. He wasn't responding to any of my messages. I just said, well, let me try one for Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm sad I don't get to see you anymore, but I respect your choices. I've been here for you. Regardless of what story you're telling yourself, I'm still here for you. And he wrote back about an hour later. I was already asleep at the time, but I saw this text the next morning. Just want to wish you a happy New Year's. Hope everything goes well for you and that you reach all your goals. Just know I have nothing against you. I'm in a crazy place in my life. I don't want you to hurt over me. I'm a horrible person. You don't need me in your life. I need you, but I'm choosing to keep my distance because the only one who would be hurt at the end from this friendship is you. I love you, Branch. Please stay safe. And I just want you to know that um, every time I read this, I feel it. Because in his mind, he told himself a story that whatever he was going through, whatever challenges he was happening, whatever maybe bad decisions he had been making, he thought that he was a horrible person and that it was better for him to remove himself from my life. He made the decision. I didn't make the decision. He didn't give me the chance to make the decision. I was nothing I would have not done for this young man. I'm glad he responded. And finally, after this response, he finally started opening up a little bit. But sometimes our young people... 21 is still young, but he's a man, right? He's an adult. But even at 21, you're still trying to figure it out. What do you do at 21 to be having a child if you've never, if you didn't have a father in your life? How do you know what to do? He was scared. And I'm so thankful that he finally let me come back into his life. He invited me back in. Like I, I just kept putting out the, the, the call. Hey, I'm here. And whether you're 15 or you're 21 or you're 31 or you're 51, I think we all need somebody in our life. That's what the work that we're doing in Ever Forward. So I'm going to stop there because now I think we're ready. I think you're ready. I think you're ready to be in a place to do this next activity because this is where the work begins. This is where I'm really asking you to do your best. So here's how it's going to work. I'm going to put a link in the chat. Now, for some of you who are comfortable clicking links all day long, click the link. Maybe for some of you, you may feel like you're nervous clicking links. So like, what I want you to do is just get a piece of paper. Now, it will be easier to do it by the link, but a piece of paper will work just fine. So I got a piece of paper here with me and I'm gonna walk you through what to do on a piece of paper. And if you don't have a piece of paper handy and, you, and it's too much complication, just probably process the words in your head and then you can do it on, on the computer later. Um, but I want you to be a part of this movement that I want you to see what's gonna happen next. This activity is actually simple, um, but it may not be easy. Okay, I'm gonna I only ask you to do two things. I'm gonna ask you to draw a picture. And I'm gonna ask you to write six words. One picture, six words. Sounds simple enough, but here's what I'm asking you to write. So if you click the link, what you will see is you'll see a, a, a window pop up and it will say, and let's say that your computer has some security features. It may say, I don't like that link. Just type in 100K masks in Google and it will pop up. Uh, the, uh, the, the, it'll pop it up, no problem. Um, but if you're doing it on paper, I just want you to label the two sides of your paper left and right or front and back. So let's say the left side will be front and the right side will be back, okay? That's the two parts of this thing. Literally, we're gonna spend like three minutes on this. Um, and uh, what we're gonna do after that, I'm gonna show you a video uh, that will help bring it together, okay? So the front, on the front, if you're on the left and if you're on the computer, you know, after you click that first draw your mask, um, the second screen, it tells you all the drawing tools. You're gonna click skip in the red bar on the bottom of the second screen. And then you will see like a postcard there. And it will be pretty much like a piece of paper left and right. You'll see front of mask and back of mask on the left. The left says front of mask, the right says back of mask, okay? So here's what you're gonna do. 
on the left side, and if you're doing it on the computer, you're going to start using the drawing tools there. You can change the colors and change the shapes and the, the, the textures. If you're on a piece of paper, on the left side where it says front, I want you to draw a mask. Okay? So draw a mask on the left side. Here we go. So whatever you think a mask looks like. Now, like I said, we've been doing this before uh, the personal protection type of mask. So when you think about, let's think about January 2020. What When you thought of a mask, what were you thinking about? Halloween, cultural masks, celebration, Burning Man. I don't know what kind of mask you would think about, but just draw a mask. Whatever you draw is going to be perfect. And if you worry about what you draw, don't worry because it's anonymous. And whatever you draw is perfect. Okay. So you, you, you're drawing a mask right now. So just let that mask get drawn. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, tell you the second step. So I'm going to give you about 30 more seconds to finish drawing. Now, if you're an artist, I know. I got some artist friends, they don't like being rushed. Don't draw your fancy mask because <laughs> I'm going to rush you. So just so you know, um, but you, you can come back at any time and complete a, a more elaborate one. So go ahead and wrap up drawing your mask, okay? And then we're going to do this first, the second step. There's three steps. First picture, first is to draw a mask. And the second step is I want you to look at the bottom. Now, if you're on the computer, there's some three boxes on the bottom. And you're going to answer this first question. If you're on a piece of paper, you're just going to use the left side. So the first question is, what are three qualities or characteristics of yourself that you gladly let the world see? What are three qualities or characteristics of yourself that you gladly let the world see? Okay. And I want you to write those anywhere on the left side. If you're on the computer, um, you can type those answers in the box and they will pop those words up to the top of the screen. So you don't have to try and write with the pen. It's sometimes hard to write letters with the pen, with the stylus. So just um, type the answers in the boxes and they will pop up to the top, okay? The first question, three qualities or characteristics that you gladly let the world see, okay? Here we go. The left side, the front of mask, are three qualities or characteristics that you gladly let the world see. Okay. All right. And maybe just take a breath. Now, if you're on the computer, um, after you answer those two questions, you're probably already on the second question, you're going to click submit in the top corner, and then it's going to ask you for your age, city, and gender. Um, if you're com not going to put in your city, just just put San Mateo County Office of Education, right? You can put S M O E S M O. And now I'm trying to figure that S M C O E. <laughs> what, what is the acronym? S M C O E. I think that's how it goes. Okay. So uh, we're not trying to figure out who you are. They're anonymous, but it really helps us to locate masks that are coming from all over the world. And we have masks coming from all over the world. Okay. So now we're going to move to the back. Okay. Now the back. It's a different question than the front. The front are the things that we gladly let the world see. The back are the things we don't talk about. Things that we often don't let people see. And just find the three that you feel comfortable in. And those who are writing on paper, you obviously it's in your own space. So you can write whatever you want. And those are on the computer, it's anonymous. So just find three things that you normally don't talk about and just write those on the back. Three that you feel comfortable writing, okay? Um, and just take a breath. If you're in your head right now and you're like, you know what, I'm not writing this. I only, I can only think of two. You just leave it at two. Just trust that your heart is, your head may be trying to overthink it for your heart. And maybe just come out of your head and come down into your heart and just say, like, if I could just be a little bit more real today, giving my best from wherever I'm at, no one judging me, what would I write? Okay. So hopefully you're finishing up. Hopefully on the computer, you're already clicking submit. Hopefully, and um, on the computer, there's sometimes a challenge. You know, um, because we're about to roll out the second version, uh, don't put your email there. Uh, I will show you a way to stay in touch with our campaign, but don't put your email, don't click stay in touch with the campaign because um, 
there's a little glitch there with a new version coming out in a couple of weeks. So uh, just um, I'll tell you how you can stay in touch with our campaign. And I would love for you to be a part of the movement. Um, but um, when you click submit the second time, then your mask will be submitted. OK, and what I'm going to do in about 30 seconds, I'm going to show you a video. OK, and this video is going to be masks from around the world. We've collected over 50,000 masks from over um, over 20 different countries. Actually, this morning, we did a workshop with a lot of folks from Europe, the UK. And so there is uh, even more countries that I had never even heard of that showed up today. So um, I'm going to show you a, a video that shares some masks from around the world. So the video that you're going to see is going to be uh, a song by some students who actually went through this activity. And then the um, the, 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 the masks you see are going to be a collection from around the world. So here we go. If you can go ahead and uh, wrap that project, that part up and be finished, I'm going to go ahead and show the video. And when we come back, it's going to give you time to like, I want to be able to hear from you. So think about how you're feeling right now. How you're feeling when you made the mask, as you were thinking about the mask, as you're thinking about what you didn't want to write. Maybe you decided I'm not doing that. Maybe you process about that. Like, what was that? But I want you right now uh, to watch this video. It's about three minutes, and then we'll we'll hear some reflections from you in the chat. Okay, here we go. I'll show you the video now. Summer you never have until you ask. You don't know just who I am under this mask. A hundred thousand masks. I'm just trying to be a man. A hundred thousand masks. You don't know just who I am. May think you know me. You can't envision my past. You don't know just who I am under this mask. A hundred thousand masks. I'm just trying to be a man. A hundred thousand masks. You don't know just who I am. Walk a thousand miles a night. Never looking back Before I take this mask off Gotta know myself in fact I can never go too fast I can never get off track Leave it in the past I can never come in last Hundred thousand men Sure I feel who I am I'm just feeling good Yeah I'm feeling like the man Running back a man Trying to ask her who I am Know just who I am When you look inside this man So much you'll never have Till you ask you don't know just who I am under this mask A hundred thousand masks I'm just trying to be a man A hundred thousand masks You don't know just who I am May think you know me You can't envision my past You don't know just who I am under this mask A hundred thousand masks I'm just trying to be a man A hundred thousand masks You don't know just who I am So this is the movement. It, the movement used to be called the 100K masks, um, but now it's called the Million Mask Movement. I want to show you an image. This is an image uh, that was uh, done by one of those young men on the couch in the first ever Forward Club. He's now an art teacher in Oakland, and he drew the image of our campaign. And so I want you to look at the image of this. So I want you to look on the outside of the face. On the outside, it says, I'm OK. On the outside, I'm OK. And some of you may already see the other word. Some of you have not seen it yet, but there's another word in between I'm okay. And he drew it the way he drew it on purpose because he said, you know what? Sometimes it's hard to see when people are not doing okay. In between I'm okay, there's a word that says not in blue. You can look at it. And he put it over the mouth because sometimes when people are not doing okay, it's really hard to talk about. And this image is the image of our campaign. This image is um, how we um, 
communicate with young people around the work. And what I'm really excited about in this movement, when we talk to young people about these masks, they get it. They get it. Sometimes they even know that some of their parents may be wearing masks because they know they are. And sometimes as adults, we try and protect them. We don't want to tell them all of the things we're going through and things we're worried about. And sometimes they have a hard time knowing how to navigate their own problems because they never see us navigate problems. And so since we're always trying to like keep everything good and cool, then what happens when they get into a problem? They're like, wait, well, maybe my parents don't know how to deal with problems because they never have any problems. But I don't want to tell them my problems. Part of our work is helping us recognize that I'm not here to tell people they shouldn't have masks. Let me be really clear about that. I'm not here to tell people our work is not telling people they shouldn't have them. Our work is do you have a place that you can safely take some of them off? The mask of having all the answers and being able to know, know exactly what to do and being in charge of it. Like, do you have a place that you can get real? That's what we need. And so what I'm going to do is in the chat, so some people are already starting to make comments there, and I'm really excited about that. If you are feeling something, like what are you feeling right now? What did you notice? What did you notice that came up in your body as you saw the mass in the video from all over the world? What did you notice as you thought about your own? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you time right now to start at writing some felt, like what you felt, what you're thinking about right now. And then if you have questions, this is the time to start putting those questions either in the Q&A or in the chat. And what I want to do is I'm going to, before I'm trying to think how to do this, because we, we're going to start doing the Q&A, but I want to give you a gift um, before I go to Q&A. So let me, let me show you the gift now. I'm trying to think about the gift. Let's, um, let's do the Q&A now. Um, and we'll start, through, I'm going to start reading some of these comments that are coming in. So some people felt uncomfortable. Um, some people said amazed at the commonalities between us all. Um, um, somebody said, I'm not alone. I saw my words and others' masks. We are all connected. Um, someone said, I, I'm not the only one who has a back of the mask. Um, someone said, I'm a parent and I don't always have the option to feel my feelings. I'm too busy getting things done for my daughter and husband. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that. I, I'm not here trying to make this sound easy. When I decide if I'm gonna tell you a story or something about, like I have to decide, like can I can I can I can I, can I do that right now without breaking it down or breaking myself down? I recognize how important it is for that we have so many things that we're dealing with, and in this time of where we are in the world. So I, if if I'm if you make, if, I hope that you're not feeling like I'm trying to say it's so easy to do. But what I am inviting is the idea that what if there's a little bit of room? What if we made a time once a week at dinner to say, hey, we're gonna have a real talk. And we're gonna just like, we're gonna all get real. The adults are gonna get real, the kids are gonna get real. We're gonna just get real. Like, do I do I have a space to do that? And we, maybe we have to craft that space. You know, luckily, I'm gonna tell you, I'm on a men's team. So every Tuesday night, I'm tonight at 7 p.m., I'll be with my men. Some weeks I need the circle and some week, I'm there to help other men who need the circle. So what do we create? Maybe it's just one person that you meet once a week and be able to like get real, like real, real. Um, that's what we're talking about. So um, Charlene, I'm going to invite you back so we can start the Q&A part. And if there are questions start coming in, um, I'm going to try and read through some more of the comments here. And then I'll just stop early so I can give everyone this gift that I have for them uh, before we before we send everyone and and. And I'm just gonna let you all know around this work is that we uh, want you to use this tool, use it with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Like we create this tool to give it away to the world because what we found is that when people have a room to recognize that they're not alone, that sometimes in our comparison of our behind the scenes, everyone else's highlight reel, we forget that everyone's going through something. And I, that's the work that we're trying to do in this work. And so um, let me, um, some people said this felt really comfortable and some said it felt uncomfortable. Um, it looks like we all have insecurities that we mask. Um, if there are questions, you can begin putting those in the chat and I'm gonna just kind of read through some more of the comments that are showing up here. Um, some people said fear. I wanna make sure I'm looking for the other side of the mask. Am I seeing past my kid's outer mask? Sometimes, oh, that, I'm so glad I'm so glad I read that. One thing that we know is that uh, 
oftentimes we use the phrase, how you doing as a greeting. Sometimes we don't even use it as a question. If you ever ask somebody how they're doing, they ask you how you're doing and you say how you're doing again, because well, you didn't even register the first time they answered the question because they weren't really answering the question. They were just saying some words to fill the space of how you're doing, because sometimes we don't even ask and mean it. So I'm not saying that's easy either. Like how you doing is what we used to greet you. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? We don't even wait for the person to answer. We just move on to the next person because we use it as a greeting. And sometimes so people, when they ask us how we're doing, we know the answer that we got. I'm good. I'm cool. I'm fine. And what we want to make sure and what we're, what we're asking people is how do you get past the kids outer mask is after you ask how you're doing and they say, I'm cool. Then you say, well, what's cool? When they say good, you say, what's good? When they say, I'm fine. You say, what's fine? I tell kids, like, when they say good, I'm like, oh, what's good? Tell me what's good. Because maybe you like Brussels sprouts, and I don't like Brussels sprouts. Maybe you think Brussels sprouts are good. I'm not judging anybody who likes Brussels sprouts. But maybe you think they're good. I don't think they're good. So tell me what you think is good right now in your life. I'm not here to judge what's going on in your life, but maybe you tell me a little bit more so I know what's, what you're saying is good. That, that's how we begin to have those conversations with them. We begin to just slowly recognize that when I ask it, I really mean it. And and I try not to ask it if I don't mean it. <laughs> it's hard to do because it's a common question that we ask people. Um, thank you for saying that. I, I, I think that was in Crystal. Thank you. Um, notice the people pretending to be the happy guy or funny guy or fearless guy. And most are dealing with some sadness inside. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, Charlene, I don't know if you see any questions yet, but I'm just going to kind of read through the comments right now. All right. I got I got one when you got a minute, but I'm not sure you really need me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I was just making sure I didn't leave any questions out, out hanging. Um, I'm well, just trying to... here's one. And I think this just really fits with what you've been saying, Ashanti. Here's a parent who asks, how do I get an 11-year-old boy to open up? When I ask him how he's feeling, all I get is fine. How do I get him to share his back of the mask? Yeah. Oh, man. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. 11. So, you know, I was a vice principal at a middle school and, um, Here's what I know. And, I, and with parents, because like some, some parents don't know that their children know them as much as you think you know your child. Your, your child knows you just as much as you know your child. So sometimes, like I knew my mom, when she asked me, how you doing? The answer is usually always fine. I'm good. I'm cool. Right. Because I know that sometimes my mom can kick things to level 20 when it needs to be just at level five. Like I got the situation. This is what happened. I don't need you calling the school because I just need you. To, I just want to tell you what's going on. So I started learning. Oh, I can't tell her about that because she can't handle it. <laughs> and so sometimes your kid is reading you and they're reading your body language. They're reading. Oh, no, I may want to tell you, but I don't know. I think you may. This may make this. I don't have an answer. I'm just going to say uh, what I would invite you to do is maybe invite him to make a mask. Like, let him go to the site, make a mask. Maybe you sit down with him and look at all the other 11 year olds around the world who've made masks. Maybe he gets to talk about what other 11 year olds are going through and ask him, does any of these words resonate with you? Well, we see when you go into that gallery of the thousands of masks that we've collected, you will see some amazing things. Sometimes some things that maybe feel really deeply felt. Um, but I would just say that beginning to open the conversation and knowing that because you asked today how you're doing and he says fine and you say, well, well tell me about fine. He's like, well, everything's going fine. If I'm, nothing's good, nothing's bad. Like, don't stop asking. Right? Not, maybe you stop asking for that day, but you say, well, the, the next two days, hey, how you doing today? Fine. Yeah, tell me what fine is today. Because sometimes, because if we've been asking it at a way that doesn't leave room for answering, then sometimes when we really mean it, they don't know that it's that new time. Even if you leave this conversation today, you may be like, hey, come in here, I wanna to talk to you about something. And then you start asking them, tell me what's happening behind the mask. They be like, what you talking about? Where you been? What workshop you been to, right? So take it easy, take it slow. And what you can do is you can just say, you know what, I wanna, um, I wanna show you this, this thing that happened. Maybe you make a mask of you when you were 11 and you share it with them. I don't know, know what the answer is. I don't have an answer. I have lots of ideas. And so I would just encourage you to just know that um, you're not the only parent who's trying to get an 11 year old to talk <laughs> and your 11 year old is not the only one who's trying to test out whether he can tell you things and not have it. I'm trying to think of the right word <laughs> and not have it go, go bad. Right. 
um, because I think that sometimes it's just having that communication. So thanks for asking that question. I, 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 that's my feelings around it right there. Thank so, you. <laughs> thank you, Ashanti. Great answer. People really want to know how to use your tool. Maybe you yeah. could talk a little bit more. Somebody is saying, could I do this with a group of people and let them see one another's mask? Or people want to be able to put their email in whenever the new version is ready. So yeah. tell us what we can do. Absolutely. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give you this digital swag bag. So in the chat right now, just put this digital swag bag. So grab that. Um, when you look at that, it's going to have an activity guide. So it's going to give you an activity guide of just kind of like a, a little, you know, a gentle structure of using it. You can do it with groups. You can share it. There's so many ways of doing it, but we gave you, we, we put in that swag bag, a, a sample guide of how to use it. Um, and just knowing that the way you just did it right now is asking people, hey, would you be willing to, let, let's all make a mask. Cause you haven't, I didn't ask you to share your masks. They're in there. I don't know whose is whose, but what happens is when you begin to first do it and you let yourself feel what you felt about it, then you can say, well, maybe we can go in. And the next version will be really amazing because what's gonna happen is you'll be able to put a code. Um, you, If you sign up as the, the facilitator, you put a code and when people make their masks, they will they will all pop up under that code and you'll be able to see a word cloud that shows what words show up the most. You'll see the top three words on the front and the top three words on the back. So we're really excited. Hopefully in about another two weeks, we'll be rolling it out. So if you're interested, you can just email us, um, email me, um, um, or you can follow us on social media and you will see when we launch it, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Ever Forward Club. I'll put that in the chat. Um, so at Ever Forward Club is where you can find us. Um, and then you can just email us, but it, it will be, we'll, we're going to blast it out as much as we can, but please like, however you connect with, um, that's the, that's our social media handle for all, mostly all platforms. But um, what we were excited about is that next phase is really giving you more, um, resources to look at what you're seeing when those cards come in. So yeah, that's how we can do that. So Ashanti, we know that kids of color and low income communities have been hit really hard by the pandemic. What can we as communities do to support those kids and as parents? I know that it must be hard to keep moving ever forward during a pandemic. Yeah, you know, yeah, thanks for that. Um, Man, lots of things come to mind. Um, in a lot of our workshops that we are doing with students, and we're doing we do workshops in in schools that are you know in urban areas and private schools. What we do know is that a lot of kids right now are feeling a a very high sense of loneliness. Now, listen, um, school didn't work for every kid when school was in session. So uh, I don't want to make it seem like school is not working for every kid now. Because there's some kids who love it. No one's judging their clothes. No one's judging their shoes, their hair. They didn't even got to take a shower. They can just stand in front of this little rectangle and they're doing just fine. So some kids are thriving right now. They don't. No one bothers them. No one cares about what they had at their their lunch. Like they get to just be. And we know that some kids who are really social and connecting, they are having a hard time. So I would say the best way we can begin helping is really as asking our, our families and our community, how are you doing? Like just really begin to listen a little bit more. I, t I tell my, my young people and I tell parents, like maybe we use our ears and our mouth and the ratio that we have and we listen twice as much as we talk. And I think that sometimes um, as adults, we have a lot to say. So we do, we probably do it in reverse. We probably talk twice as much as we listen. And even when we're, we say we're gonna listen, we only listen up until the point where we got something to say and then we take over again. I think maybe like having a time limit, like, you know, I mean, the question was, how do you help those communities? I think it's a really big question. I don't really know uh, a good answer for that, but I will say the more that we can begin being more aware of, of our own space and time and how we're doing, I think it just begins to trickle as we begin more aware of our emotions and feelings and our kids become more aware of their emotions and feelings. And when they go to school, they're, they're sharing more awareness of their, mo like, it, I think it becomes that we all become more aware. And I think that um, there's a quote by Howard Thurman that says, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive and go do that. Cause what the world needs is more people who have come alive. And I know that when I was an engineer, I was making a lot of money, but I felt like I was, not fully alive. And I think that, and I don't think that 
um, I think when I became a teacher, something in me was like, this is what you're supposed to be doing. I'm not asking you all to go become teachers. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but maybe you got some resources because the work you do can support some teachers. Maybe you got a, a nonprofit that is doing grass works through and you know what? I can support that way. Maybe you have, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't mean, there's so many ways of being able to, I just believe the more that we can just get more in touch with ourselves, the more that we can support each other. And I think it's so important. Um, so thanks for that question. I wish I had a better answer, but um, I just think that the more we connect back to our hearts um, and stop running around in our heads so much, uh, I think we become, we, we build communities that are a little bit more loving and caring. And how about those be qualities of alpha traits, loving and caring and kindness. I think that's what we need more in the world. And again, for those of you who didn't get to hear the introduction, I really invite you and encourage you to watch both the film, The Mask You Live In, where a lot of us came to know Ashanti's work. The film was from, from what, 2015, is that right? Yeah, absolutely. And there's a brand new episode from Lisa Ling. Um, this is Life with Lisa Ling called Lost Boys that features Ashanti's work, I think in San Mateo County, is that right? Yeah, they featured, uh, it was a, a Rites of Passage program called the um, Young Men's Ultimate Weekend. Uh, that was, uh, the, it was filmed up in Marin County, yeah. And uh, the young men were from all over the Bay Area. Um, and there's a new documentary called Beyond Men and Masculinity that our work is featured in. I just put the link there. I think actually the link is in the swag bag, so you don't need to copy that one. In the swag bag, you will see uh, the new documentary that our work is featured in as well. So um, yeah, I, were there any more questions? I wanna make sure that I, I get to hit all the questions. I wanna give the gift. Let me give me the gift. Let me give the gift. Okay, okay you let me, go. Let me give the gift. Okay, so here's how the gift works. Now it's a virtual gift. So you ever had a virtual gift? Well, you're gonna get one today. So. Here's how the, first, the, the virtual gift works, okay? So um, there is, uh, like most times when we do these workshops, if I could hand you a, a gift in your hand, I would, but since I can't, I'm gonna give you this virtual gift. And so here's how the gift works. Um, here it is. You can say today was the first day you got a virtual gift. Here's the gift. Uh, there's a letter. Uh, and this letter says, uh, this is the second letter from this one young man. It says, uh, thank you later to Mr. Branch. Uh, he's 11, by the way. That's when you say 11 year old, it really stuck with me. Uh, Dear Mr. Branch, I wanna thank you for being there for me. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't probably be here right now. <laughs> I hope to see you next year because I need somebody to share my feelings with or how I'm feeling. And you is one of those people I can talk to. And I wanna thank that for you. Thank you. And I want to let you know that this is the second letter I got from this young man. And the first letter was not this positive. Um, but I'll never forget this letter and I'll never forget this thank you. Um, because, you know, sometimes the work that we're doing, somebody's not going to write us a thank you letter. And so for all the things you do that maybe go unappreciated, I just want to, on behalf of this young man who, who, who shared his thanks with me, I want to thank you for parents, teachers, students out there, for like all the work that you do that gets unnoticed. I just wanna thank that for you. For all the times that you feel like at the end of the night, you just fall into sleep because you're just exhausted. I just wanna thank that for you. And today I told you that today was not really trying to fill your head with a bunch of data and numbers and facts. It was really about seeing if we can connect back to our hearts because I think that's what we need so much in the world. And so, um, this quote that says the longest distance most people travel is the 18 inches between their head and their heart. And most of us get stuck in our heads. And so today was about connecting back to your heart and for all the hard work you're doing, I just wanna thank you. And if I could hand you each a heart in your hands, I would, um, but I can't. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna hand you this virtual heart. Sorry, it's out of order, but I'm gonna hand you this virtual heart right here. This is the heart um, that um, I would hand you um, as a reminder to stay connected to your heart. So every time you see a heart on a picture, a painting, something you're like, hmm, when was the last time I connected to my heart? And um, that's the work. And I invite you to stay connected to the work that we're doing. Please uh, get involved in whatever that looks like. If that means sharing this link to somebody, sharing it on your, your community. If it means that you know somebody who has resources to help us move this move. We have a goal of collecting a million masks. Well, why do we have a, why a million? I don't know. This is like a nice number, but what it is, every mass counts. Every mass that a young person makes, that an adult makes, that a senior makes, that a, a seven-year-old makes to say, you know what? There's more to me than people can see. 
And when we can begin seeing each other more than what our eyes are seeing, when we begin to ask more questions, I think we can create a community that we really love and that we want to be a part of. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for letting me um, take a few moments of your time. I, take, I think that time is more valuable than money. And so I really appreciate every minute you spent here. And I hope that you got something out of it. I hope that from that place of giving your best, that you got something out of today. And that's all I, that's my hope for this work. That's my hope for the world. And uh, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, Ashanti. Thank you, everybody, for being here. You have inspired us all. There weren't a lot of questions because I think we're all just feeling so emotional and taking you in and everything you said. So again, take care, everybody. Email me, email Ashanti, stay in touch. We promise we'll figure out how to show that new documentary, but um, stay well, stay safe. And again, thank you, Ashanti Branch, for your brilliance and your passion tonight. It was a real treat for all of us. Mm -hmm.